Good morning, Memphis. I'm Siobhan Riley. It is approaching 730 this Saturday morning, a chilly Saturday morning at that. Thanks for sticking with us. Let's go ahead and check with meteorologist Elizabeth Diamore for a look at your weather forecast. Good morning, Elizabeth. Developing news this morning, President Trump is in the hospital where he will spend the next few days. It's a move the White House made out of an abundance of caution after he tested positive for coronavirus. To your left is Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. That is where the president will quarantine. To your right is the White House where First Lady Melania Trump is recovering. The president's doctor says the president is fatigued. Sources say that he also has a fever and was, quote, spooked by his diagnosis. Camilla Burnell explains. Everybody for the tremendous support. For months, the White House has used rapid tests to help limit the president's possible exposure to coronavirus. Last week, the Trump administration announced it will send millions of rapid tests to states to help get students and teachers back to school. But with the top aide and the first lady testing positive, there are now questions about how well do they work. The downside to the test is the results are not always reliable. That means you could be infected with the virus and still get negative results. Let's look at the coronavirus headlines around the Mid-South. The CDC identified a new COVID-19 syndrome in adults that is similar to Miss C and in kids, including malfunction of organs and extreme inflammation. The state of Arkansas school system is dealing with its second coronavirus death this week as the state faces a surge in cases. Suzanne Michael, an elementary school teacher from Harrisburg, died Thursday night. Earlier this week, the Atkins School District Superintendent Jody Jenkins passed away. And in Shelby County, 18 MATA employees tested positive for coronavirus. They are now in quarantine. 700 Tennesseans died from COVID-19 in September, according to state data. That's the largest number of deaths from the illness in a single month so far. But that isn't leading to tighten restrictions. In fact, we're seeing just the opposite. Fox 13's Dominique Dillon explains. Health experts attribute the spike in COVID cases among young people to schools reopening. Some students have the option to return to the University of Memphis on Monday. The coronavirus has led to so many issues. It's even making it harder for victims of domestic violence to get the help they desperately need. The person beating you, constantly beating you, constantly, you get tired. An emotional cry for help. And as you can see, we disguised her voice and are not showing her face to protect her identity. I spoke exclusively with that woman who is urging victims to leave before it is too late. Tennessee State Representative G.A. Hardaway from Memphis is urging local, state and federal leaders to commit more resources to help victims struggling to leave abusive relationships, especially during this pandemic when domestic violence cases are on the rise. October marks the start of flu season, but this year won't be typical considering that we're still fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, which brings up the question of how much dangerous of the flu season could we have? Fox 13's Jonathan Marshall spoke with a doctor from Baptist Memorial, and he says the flu and COVID, they are making things quite an interesting combination. The doctor you just heard from did have a very positive take on things. He says we've never been more cautious when it comes to washing our hands and wearing face coverings. Still, he says all we need to do is get those flu shots as he just spoke about. And starting Monday, the Shelby County Health Department will offer flu shots. Visit our website, fox13memphis.com to find out where you can get those flu shots. New details this morning. The job report certainly played a role in the market recovery. More than 660,000 jobs were added to the U.S. economy in September. This is the final jobs report before the presidential election. It's the fifth month in a row of job additions. The unemployment rate is now below 8% for the first time since March. Election Day 2020 is 32 days away, but there are already concerns about voting and claims that actions are being taken to prevent 
some people from participating in the process. The Trump administration is calling on supporters to patrol polling places on Election Day. Municipal courts will resume in court appearance starting on Monday. Courts will continue to practice social distancing rules and will stagger court dates as the safety measure continues. A local nonprofit receives a huge honor. What this award means for youth villages and the city of Memphis. But first, a Germantown man says he recovered from COVID-19 at the age of 62. We share his amazing journey and the message to those who don't take this virus seriously. Fox 13's Good Morning Memphis is back live right after this. Good morning, Memphis. I'm Siobhan Riley. It is 6 a.m. on this beautiful Saturday morning, September 12th. Let's go ahead and take a look at your weekend weather forecast with meteorologist Elizabeth Diamore. Good morning, Elizabeth. Hey, good morning. Just one week into the season and Memphis football just pressed pause on its schedule. The university announced today that a number of individuals connected with the team tested positive for COVID-19. Fox 13's Jonathan Marshall tells us what this means for the rest of the season. This morning, more than 6.4 million people tested positive for coronavirus in the United States. Tennessee continues to lead with cases in the Mid-South. More than 169,000 people in the state tested positive for COVID-19. And Mississippi with more than 850 new cases. The state is now just below 90,000 cases. But the Magnolia State leads the Mid-South in deaths. In Arkansas, the natural state is now nearing 68,000 cases. Collierville High School is returning to in-person learning. Starting Monday, some students will be back in the classroom. Extracurricular activities will also resume. Two weeks ago, the district sent everyone home and closed the high school after five people tested positive for COVID-19. This week, we told you more than 5,000 Shelby County School students still do not have digital devices. So does that mean about 1 and 20 students are not attending school? Fox 13's Dominique Dillon shares how that is not necessarily the case. That was Fox 13's Dominique Dillon reporting. The district told us yesterday there are several reasons the devices may not have been picked up and they are doing what they can to make sure that each child receives an education. Starting Monday, free meals will be provided to Germantown students. Breakfast and lunch will be given to students 18 years or younger. A grassroots group is targeting Tennessee Governor Bill Lee for not enacting a statewide mask mandate. As Fox 13's Tom Dees found out, the group says the governor needs to stop asking Tennesseans to do the right thing and instead ask them to do the Christian thing. All of the group members invoking the name of Jesus. The Southern Christian Coalition is a group of faith organizations who say politics have hijacked the pulpit and that the values of faith should be weighed when making important decisions. The extra $300 a week for unemployment has now ended in Tennessee. The last payment was on September 5th. FEMA funded a $44 billion grant for the extra money. The agency said once the grant ran out of money, the payments would stop. So starting next week, the unemployment benefits will only include what you are eligible to receive through either a state or federal unemployment program. Developing news this morning, members of Congress are at a stalemate over negotiations for a second round of coronavirus relief aid. Both parties agree Americans need more financial help to deal with the impact of the pandemic. The problem is they haven't reached a compromise. It's possible a deal won't be reached until after the election. The Republican proposal failed in the Senate this week. Economic experts urge Congress to act quickly to reach a deal. For those disappointed they can't attend the Southern Heritage Classic this year, well, there's some good news coming up. How you can still be a part of the celebration. Team News. Parents are outraged over a viral video showing food a Shelby County School gave out to students. It's getting thousands of reactions online and now an investigation by the district is underway. 
Fox 13's Tony Sloan talked with the district and parents at Sherwood Elementary to get their reaction. Only on Fox 13, the mayor of West Memphis says the city has been approved for a federal grant to help families facing evictions. That means a quarter of a million dollars will benefit families in need. Violent crime continues to be a problem in Memphis. As Fox 13's Jeremy Pierre explains, that's why officers with the Memphis Police Department's Community Outreach Program are working to fight crime by uniting the community. New this morning, a second man is arrested, charged in the deadly double shooting at a Memphis rap concert. This concert was in North Memphis. Georgian Churchman was arrested this week at a home in Shelby County. He is facing first degree murder and aggravated assault warrants. A man and woman were killed in that July shooting in Como, Mississippi. New this morning, protesters in Tennessee will face harsher penalties, including losing the right to vote. This will be for breaking certain laws during demonstrations under a new law. Governor Bill Lee signed off on it this week. The law says that those who illegally camp on state property will face a Class E felony.